Welcome, everybody, to The World is a Mess, and I just want to steampunk it. This is episode 65. This is June 12, 2022. I'm your host, Steampunk Star Raisin, and I'm here in North Hollywood, and I'm here with my co-host, Daniel Berterson. He is in Bellwood, Ontario, Canada. So how's it going, Daniel? What's on your mind? Uh, well, um, I just watched Kenobi, uh, Kenobi season uh, episode four, and... Uh, uh, Strange New Worlds episode six, and I got I love I love these episodes. They're really good. I am not very happy with Strange New Worlds. I find it to be it's kind of like Love Boat in space. Mm-hmm. I think it's distracting from the original intent of what Star Trek is supposed to be. Um, I like or I like the Orville. Orville is everything that Gene Roddenberry you know, wanted in Star Trek. It is the best version of Star Trek that's not even technically Star Trek. And so I'm pretty happy with Orville New Horizons. I've only mm-hmm. seen the first episode. Uh, but yeah, Strange New Worlds episode six it was kind of mediocre. You know, another bland alien race. And there's a child who they got to use his brain as a computer. Uh, it, I don't know. It was okay i guess uh you know An- uh anson mont or am i pronouncing his name what now anson mount anson mount sorry i'm really bad at pronouncing his name but anyway anson mount uh he he puts on a good job as an actor but i just think that the story is kind of weak and the problem is you only have 10 episodes per season I really wish instead of doing yeah. ten instead of doing ten episodes of Picard, ten episodes of Strange New Worlds, and ten episodes of Discovery, they would just focus on one series and do thirty episodes, so that way you can have much more in depth storytelling. And they seem to stick with the regular uh, TV format. The one thing that was refreshing about Orville New Horizons episode one was that it was an hour and one minute. And it really uh, needed it for the storytelling. And, it, it, you know, you can tell that they took more time and care with it. But, yeah, um, I mean, it was okay. On a scale of 1 to 10, I give episode 6 a 5. It was okay. I mean, it wasn't mm-hmm. anything special. Uh, I thought it was kind of relatively uninteresting and bland episode. But, yeah. but you liked it, though. Yeah, you know what? It... it, it... It came to me when when they said they need like they, they needed the first uh, the, the, they call him the first servant and they yeah they him basically to come back. using the child for they need its brain to they need the child's brain to, for a computer it yeah, sounds yeah, very, it's a, a very it's a similar cheesy spot uh, I mean the original series had some bad episodes too like Spock's brain so it kind of reminded me of Spock's brain a little bit it made no sense. Uh, made no sense at all. Uh, if you have computer technology that's that sophisticated, I mean, we already have supercomputers that can surpass the capability of the human brain as far as analyzing data. And so knowing that with contemporary 21st century technology, uh, it makes no sense why would an advanced alien civilization need to have a child as a computer have a child's brain as a computer it made no sense to me uh and it kind of harkened back to spock's brain and that was a bad episode of the original series Mm -hmm. so yeah there was some there were some bad episodes of the original series not not everything was perfect even then but yeah i thought it was kind of a bland and unremarkable episode but maybe i'm just kind of a pessimist Anything yeah, else you no. want to talk about with uh, Strange New Worlds episode six before we move on to Kenobi mm-hmm. episode four? Yeah, okay. So from what I understand, like, okay, the planet is a lava planet. It's like Mustafar. And uh, at the civilization, whatever's left, is living on this, on this, uh, you know, this island in the clouds, right? And um, they need the kid to power a machine. And Which makes machine, no sense, like I said, yes. that reminds me of uh, Spock's brain episode. Yeah. He needed Spock's brain to power the computer system, to power the city. That made yeah. no sense to me. 
Well, so see, from what I understand is they probably had some kind of a devastating, somewhere in the past, they had a devastating war, they destroyed their planet. And however, however they did, did these islands, they created, well, they saved a little bit of the planet and they launched it into the atmosphere. And this machine keeps it afloat, but they, they need the, 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 the brain waves of a child. To power yeah, it, may, it, it again very, harkens back to Spock's brain. Pretty bad plot point because it makes no sense in my mm-hmm. opinion. But like I said, they, they don't know why. They don't know why. They um, don't know why. That's just the lazy writing. No explanation given. I don't know why. You know, but yeah, if you're going to tell a good story, you need to at least have a hint of an explanation. But yeah, mm-hmm. it's just it's just more bland Star Trek. I I have not been. I've been greatly disappointed with Strange New Worlds. Not as disappointed as I was with Picard. Picard really disappointed me because Patrick Stewart actually signed on for that crap. But uh, apparently he liked it. Apparently well, I heard he that Patrick Stewart was not happy the way they, they treated his character. Uh, so I don't know. Um, we will see it going forward with the, the final season in season three. Uh, but yeah, anything else about Strange New Worlds before we move on to Kenobi episode four? Uh, no, we can, yeah, so on to Kenobi, on to Kenobi. Yeah, I have, I had great hopes for Kenobi, but I have been greatly disappointed. Oh, yeah, uh, I, I get it, everybody likes that they brought back Darth Vader, but it's kind of cheesy in the sense that it makes no sense. The retconning stuff and it makes no sense. I don't like the child actress who plays Princess Leia. I find her to be annoying. Um, I don't like that she's got a basically a droid, like a pet droid that's like looks like freaking Mickey Mouse complete with, with uh, fold up Mickey Mouse ears. That's just really it's too Disney cutesy. It's Disney Star Wars. It's not Lucas Star Wars. Mm-hmm. And they, I don't like that, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi is this embittered old man who's reluctant to be a hero and doesn't even want to help out fellow Jedi. That doesn't seem like Kenobi to me. Uh, I, I don't like that he's met Princess Leia. It makes no sense that Princess Leia would send a hologram to R2-D2 in A New Hope, which takes place only nine years later. She would say, Help me, Obi Wan Kenobi. You helped me nine years ago when I was kidnapped. She wouldn't say, "You work with my." In the original canon, and the way Lucas had set it up in the prequels, in the sequel trilogy, um, Princess Leia had never met Obi Wan Kenobi, and she had heard of him because he had been friends with Bail Organa, and that was featured in the prequels. But she she had heard about him through the uh, you know his uh, his efforts during the Clone Wars being that Kenobi was a Clone Wars veteran and um, she heard about him through her father. And so it totally breaks continuity. They're retconning things, but it's still, it makes no sense why she would refer to him in third person about hearing about Kenobi through her father when she met him when he was 10 years old. Was she, why wouldn't she just say, help me run Kenobi. You helped me nine years ago when I was well, kidnapped. It she makes did, no sense. It makes no yeah, sense. You she can't said, spin it any other way. Like she said, she didn't say, she, she just said years ago you helped my father in the Clone Wars. She didn't say that she didn't know him. Yeah, but you would think that, you know, for, it's just really lazy writing. You would think that if he had saved her nine years ago, she'd bring that up. Yeah. Because that would be more recent than the Clone Wars. The way it was originally written, the way George Lucas originally intended it, was Obi-Wan Kenobi never left Tatooine. He stayed on Tatooine for that full 19 years. And mm-hmm. um, so they're break, they're retconning things, they're breaking canon, and it contradicts the dialogue in uh, A New Hope. And also Darth Vader having a rematch with Obi-Wan Kenobi makes no sense because um, you know, Darth Vader in A New Hope confronted Obi-Wan Kenobi and he's like, you know, the last time I met you, I was but an apprentice, but now I am the master. And Obi-Wan Kenobi is like only a master of evil, Darth. 
Well, and yeah, so, we, we and so said- it makes no sense because because Darth Vader is not an apprentice of Obi Wan Kenobi. He was when he was Anakin Skywalker. He was an apprentice, but that was during the Clone Wars, and so. They're breaking canon and they're creating continuity errors when it doesn't need to be. It's just lazy writing, lazy writing. And I'm not the yeah. only Star Wars fan that's irritated by that. I find it to be very, very irritating. Yeah. Um, it's just, I don't know. We'll, we got two more episodes, um, you know, and and then, and it's it's just really bad writing. Like Reva has the ability to read people's minds but then you know what is it uh uncle owen you know luke's uncle uh she's not she doesn't read his mind even though she read everybody else's mind it made those it it makes no sense even from from their continuity violations even within the season of kenobi because if reva has the ability to read people's minds. Why doesn't she read Owen's mind? You know, yeah, you know, and be able to find out where Kenobi is. It's just, it's just, you know, really poorly done. Some of the CGI looked a little fake as well. You could tell it's a another bottle show done on a low budget. And I think um, a lot of the uh, the I don't know what's the name of the planet that Kenobi goes to. You know. Uh, the first time he breaks canon. I'm not sure. I, I, I don't He remember. leaves Tatooine. He gets on that transport where Leia's kidnapped to. Anyway, it's like that, mo- I'll call it the Mafia planet. And when he goes to yeah. that Mafia planet, um, I could, you know, I remember seeing some test footage from Star Wars Underworld. So it seems like they've recycled a lot of their footage from the unreleased Star Wars Underworld that never got past uh, pre-production they did do some test shooting but they never and they had some scripts written but they never actually produced star wars underworld that was supposed to be a tv show that was going to air on regular television not just streaming the problem i have with streaming series with whether it be kenobi book of boba fett uh whether it be picard whether it be strange new worlds is they do not have the budget to properly do the special effects they don't have the budget to properly flesh out enough episodes to do a good story. They don't have the budget to hire uh, apparently talented writers. A lot of the CGI looks kind of cheap. It looks like they're cutting corners uh, because you don't have millions of dollars advertisement revenue like you do on regular television. And streaming is a niche audience. You, I, you know, I guarantee you that probably. They might have a few hundred thousand people watch on Disney Plus or Paramount Plus, but it's not going to be the numbers that you would normally get from regular television. You yeah. know, so uh, I think it's a flawed business model, and I I think it's not working. I really don't. Um, I know that they were trying, you know, releasing movies to streaming because of COVID. But now that, you know, the COVID restrictions have kind of gone down, uh, even though technically the pandemic is not over, we still got about 300 deaths a day. But... Um, 300? 300 a day? Yeah, 300 a day uh, in all 50 states. That's 300 a day. They're mostly un- non-vaccinated. It just doesn't really make the news anymore. I follow the CDC website, and uh, if, you, if you track uh, COVID-19 deaths in the U.S. through Google, Google oh. has a chart on that. But anyway, um, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people tell me, don't believe what you hear on the news because everything is a lie. Well, you got to have multiple sources of information. Each news source has its bias. Like Fox News has Republican bias. Uh, CNN and MSNBC have corporate Democratic bias. And so I go to a lot of foreign news sources like France 24. Al Jazeera. Uh, I'll even go to Russia Today. Russia Today has bias when it comes to the Russian government, when it comes to Putin, but they have they're less biased when it comes to other things. And so uh, you just got to take, you got to do your research. You got to have multiple sources of information, and you got to realize what the what are what is the underlying bias 
for some of these uh, news organizations and, 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 you know, independent news, do your independent research, use the scientific method, be critical of yourself, not just of others. Use the scientific method, be, be yeah. critical, be skeptical, but not just of others. You also got to be skeptical of yourself. Yeah, but and what use multiple like, sources of information. Don't yeah. jump to conclusions based on one or two sources. Yeah, definitely. But like the, these these news outlets, what do they gain by lying? Apparently, according to people, these news well, it's all news politics. It's all corporate politics, you know. Yeah, but they have nothing to gain. I, I'm Republican Corp versus Democrat Corp. You know, um, you know. So, I mean, I mean, they have nothing to gain, really, from lying. I don't know. There's many competing interests. I mean, the United States is basically a corporatocracy. It is not a true uh, democracy. It is because uh, the majority of people are further to the left than uh, Joe Biden. But yet Joe Biden likes to say, I'm not a socialist. I can't do anything. I can't help it. Can't do anything. I'm sleepy old Joe. But yeah, it drives me nuts. But, you know, what can you expect? Yeah. Like these people are saying nothing is happening in Ukraine and don't listen to what they're saying. If nothing is happening. And well, the war people- has gone to a stalemate in Ukraine. Uh Russia has redeployed its troops to the east, and they have taken a couple of major cities. Yeah, uh, they take. But you know what they're saying? They're saying that these people are just a bunch of actors that we see, and nothing is happening. It's uh, all an act. It's not true. Well, if that's true, that's a lot of actors. Yeah, that would make no sense. But what about this new this new COVID variant? You said there were two new ones. Uh, I think like BA one, BA two. It hasn't really gotten much news. Uh, they don't even have, give them a fancy name anymore, like Omicron. And now we have a spread of monkeypox. Uh, the CDC issued a warning about that. So I, I don't know, man. The United States is in decline. We got Joe Biden referring to his wife as, as Joe, uh, or uh, he referred to his wife. He did an interview with Jimmy Kimmel, which was pretty cringe, where he referred to his wife as Joe Biden's wife. <laughs> and, um, and then he... Uh, or he said, I'm Joe Biden's wife. That's what he actually said. He had, uh, you know, a senior moment. He really shouldn't be president. He's kind of asleep at the wheel. And he's very naive. He thinks that the Republicans, you know, he could just strike a deal with the Republicans. Well, the Republicans hate you, Joe, because simply because you're a Democrat. They're all pro-Trump. So get over it. Stop trying to kiss Republican ass. And then the other thing that was really cringe that he said on Jimmy Kimmel, and it just shows you how dated and how conservative he was. He's like, we have the most tolerant generation ever. I, I, I turn on the TV and I see uh, biracial couples. Yeah, um, that was breaking news like 40, 50 years ago, Joe. Today, that's normal. You act like that's something new, you know. But yeah, he's not really doing anything. I mean, he's still better than Trump. Don't get me wrong. But yeah, he, he's he's just a he's just a senile old man, and he's he's a corporate tool. That's all Biden is, corporate tool. Yeah. Uh, like I said, don't get me wrong. I I it came to uh, a Trump versus Biden rematch. I would vote for Biden again because. Trump will destroy this country, will destroy the United States. I got to keep looking at it in third person because, you know, half this podcast, you're in Canada. So it's not just, but what happens in the United States impacts Canada, of course. But yeah, um, 
total, total uh, cringe, uh, and he refuses to do anything. He refuses yeah. to really try to fight. He's he's sitting there saying that they have we have the strongest economy ever. No, eighty percent of Americans are suffering, Joe. We have massive inflation when it comes to food, healthcare, and rent, and wages are not going up. And you know, eighty percent of people live paycheck to paycheck. In my opinion, that's 80% of people living in poverty. I mean, the poverty line is only at 50%, but the federal government sets the poverty line conservatively low. They consider you to be lifted out of poverty if you make 1200 a month. Well, the cost of living in the United States is so high, 1200 a month is not enough anymore. Not if you can include retirement and healthcare. Um, you know, most places like here in LA, the average cost of rent is 2600 a month. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm lucky to be on disability and I get assistance. But yeah, so uh, it's, it was a really cringy interview and it really sums up what's wrong with Biden. Um, and I say this from I consider myself a moderate liberal uh, from a left-leaning perspective. Joe Biden is way too conservative, and he's he's just way too out of touch. I mean, he's sitting there talking about uh, biracial couples on t on the TV like it's like it's like something you would say in 1960, uh, and it just comes off as insensitive and out of touch. Um, but like I said, it's it's going to be probably, you know, a total crap show part two because uh, Trump is polling really strong and he stands a good chance of winning the nomination again in 2024. So yeah. uh, and then Biden said he's going to run for reelection. So it looks like it might be Biden versus Trump part two. So yeah. we shall see. But I am not very optimistic uh, because uh, in, in the United States, the standard of living and the economy is the worst I've seen it in my lifetime. You know, you fr freaking most jobs don't even, you, you know, here, specifically here in L.A., you, you could get a job at In-N-Out Burger making $17 an hour. And by the time you pay payroll tax and state income tax, you're not going to have enough. You can either pay for rent or food, and then you're going to be working full time, and then maybe you're not going to have time to go to a food bank. Uh, and it's and you know I guess you'd have to get a bunch of roommates, but then you're having to do credit checks, and then you're putting your life in danger living with strangers. Like I had, I had tried to move in with roommates once in L.A. I'm lucky I live alone, and I got fed glass because somebody tried to kill me. Uh, I mean, literally, because it was a guy that was like, he didn't like me, he didn't want me living there. So he fed me glass. And luckily, I caught on pretty quick and didn't stay there very long. And it was, it was all scam anyway, uh, trying to uh, scam me into paying to live there, but not give me a key. And he was subletting uh, a room from an apartment that he was renting. So my name would have even been on the lease. You know, you deal with shenanigans like that. You should be able to just get a job and be able to afford a one-bedroom apartment comfortably and be able to afford retirement, be able to afford health care comfortably. But we don't have an economy like that. We got an economy that is up shit's creek. And it really pisses me off that we have people like Joe Biden, who's just so sleepy and out of touch. But that's, that's what the corporatocracy wants, government ruled by corporations. You know, they want somebody that's a good figurehead who won't really rock the boat, won't really do anything. You just sit there and make excuses. And that's Joe Biden. But yeah, like I said, again, I'm not supporting a Republican or Trump. He is the lesser of two evils because he would be far worse under Trump. Or I know another uh, big contender of the Republican Party is Ron DeSantis. He'd be far worse under Ron DeSantis because Ron DeSantis... He's also a fascist, just like Trump.
but yeah. So <sighs> I don't know, man. Sounds complicated. It gets kind of depressing if I think about it too much. So I try not to think about it too much. Anyway, what's your what's your response to that? Ah, it sounds complicated, you know. Uh, so who 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 would you pick? Yeah, I guess uh, I guess yeah. We, we we don't want Trump, right? So any one of those other. Well, guys if I probably... had my ideal pick, I would pick Bernie Sanders. Yeah. And Bernie Sanders is has hinted that he might run again, but only if Joe Biden is not running for re-election. So that kind of throws that out the window. We really, but then somebody needs to challenge on the Democratic side. Somebody needs to challenge Biden. Uh, um, they need to primary him because he's not really doing anything. But yeah. I doubt that, you know, you know, Bernie Sanders has said that he's not going to run for uh, another. Uh, he's not going to run for president again if Biden uh, is uh, um, going to run for reelection. Uh, he doesn't want to be divisive against Trump. But you know we just we're we're this country is going nowhere but down uh i mean it, you know some people are okay i barely survive but um it's uh the economy is rough it's very rough like you know it's something abnormal when you can't even you know you can work two full-time jobs and still not afford the cost of an apartment Unless you're on disability and you get, you know, you're getting, us, you know, assistance such as I, but, you know, for most people, you're, you're pretty much screwed, uh, you know, and, you know, even in areas like where I come from in Pensacola, Florida, where uh, rent is slightly cheaper, but yet wages are so bare bottom low you still can't afford an apartment because yeah we just we've gotten to the point in this country where you know we're in late stage capitalism where where everything is just cannibalizing itself we have such massive corruption uh we're ruled by corporations they play lip service to democracy but it's not true democracy and yeah um you know, things get slowly worse. Uh, they were getting uh, greatly worse under Trump. But yeah, we only have about three minutes left. So any last thoughts before we end up uh, ending this podcast? Because I, uh, the pod, the, the way Zoom works with the free version is we only let you uh, broadcast for 40 minutes. And that's from the start when I uh, turn on Zoom. And so, like, when you take, like, five or ten minutes to join me, that's taking away five or ten minutes from what we could be doing on Zoom. Because I only have a total of 40 minutes, and there was one time where we just abruptly got cut off. So when I, when I cut it at 30 minutes, I got to be firm because I, I want to be able to have a nice exit line and uh, before Zoom just abruptly, abruptly cuts me off. Before a recent update, it used to not do that. I used to be able to do Zoom meeting for an hour, and I missed that because that allowed me to go more in depth with things. But I'll have to see how much it costs to get a subscription to Zoom. I don't know if, I, if it's really worth it for what I'm doing because I'm just a small podcast. But anyway, we got about one minute left. Uh, any last thoughts before we exit? No, there's nothing to to mind. Yeah, I just, uh, to summarize, uh, Strange New Worlds, episode six, kind of mediocre, kind of bland. Um, Kenobi series, so far, pretty terrible. Hopefully, there'll be some redemption in the last two episodes, but somehow I doubt it. And the state of politics in the United States is a complete shit show, but... We're running out of time. I just got the 10 minute notification. Uh, so, but anyway, so thank you for joining us. I am your host, Steampunk Stories, and I'm here in North Hollywood, California, USA. And I've been here with my co host, Daniel Bertison. 
in Bellwood, Ontario, Canada. And this is uh, June the 12th, 2022. This is episode 65 of The World is a Mess, and I just want to steampunk it. You have a nice day, and I will sue 25 billion years. I will. <laughs>